Today's topic, inflation. Is inflation coming? What is inflation? And what can we do about it? This is what we're going to talk about today. And I'm happy to have you here. But before we start, um, yeah, some housekeeping. Just want to make sure that you can see and hear me loud and clear. Therefore, um, yeah, do me a favor, hit the like button, say hello in the chat, just to make sure or to let me know that the tech side is working. And as usual, um, yeah, I want this to be a conversation, a discussion, a, yeah, sharing of ideas, sharing of thoughts. Therefore, feel free to yeah, put your questions in the chat, in the comment section. Um, yeah, share your thoughts there. So um, yeah, that we can have a productive and interesting conversation today. All right. So let's jump right into it. So um, yeah, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what is inflation. Um, we're going to talk about how it's being measured. We're going to talk about what can cause inflation, because I think um, yeah, it's very important to understand what inflation actually is, because at the end of the day, inflation is a very weird thing. and. Um, yeah, hard to grasp and hard to understand. Then, of course, we will talk about the different sectors that will probably be affected um, by inflation, or we will talk about yeah, what inflation can mean to different sectors, to different industries. And of course, um, last but not least, we'll talk about the different measures that we can take to actually react or maybe prevent um, yeah, in time before um, yeah, it's maybe too late. So um, yeah, again, I hope we will have an interesting conversation today, an interesting um, topic, is it um, anyway? So um, yeah, let me start um, and make sure that we are all starting on the same page and um, yeah, let's maybe make sure we know or we all talk about the same thing when we talk about inflation, because depending on who you ask or from what perspective you're coming from, you might have a little different viewpoint on it. So um, yeah, I went to Wikipedia and um, just took a screenshot there. And Wikipedia says, in economics, inflation refers to a general progressive increase in prices of goods and services in an economy. When the general price level rises, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services. Consequently, inflation corresponds to a reduction in the purchasing power of money. The opposite of inflation is deflation, a sustained decrease in the general price level of goods and services. The common measure of inflation is the inflation rate, the annualized percentage change in a general price index. So we'll talk about the definition um, yeah, in a second, a little bit more detailed. But um, yeah, let's also have a look at what the European Central Bank says about inflation. So what is inflation? Inflation is a broad increase in prices. In a market economy, prices for goods and services can always change. Some prices rise, some prices fall. Inflation occurs if there is a broad increase in the prices of goods and services, not just of individual items. It means you can buy less for one euro, or of course, US dollar, dollar pound, whatever, today than you could yesterday. In other words, inflation reduces the value of the currency over time. So generally speaking, um, I think what um, yeah, everybody agrees on when we talk about inflation is um, yeah, that it's basically a description, a concept, a term for um, yeah, the decrease in buying power of your money, meaning you can buy less 
and less goods and services for the same amount of money. And um, what I think is, or and then the opposite of that, uh, of course, is deflation, meaning you know, your money becomes more and more valuable, meaning you can buy tomorrow more for the same amount of money um, than you can buy today. Generally speaking, um, yeah, most economists say that deflation is something that you do not want to have in an economy um, because yeah, it stops economic growth, it um, stops people from buying goods and services because they know, well, if I wait a little bit, then it becomes cheaper. Um, although, um, yeah, usually we do not have inflation um, in an economic sense, um, in a whole economy most of the time. Um, we have it for sure in some industries or in some products or goods, for example, um, especially when we're talking about technology over the last, yeah, basically all the time, technology becomes always cheaper because technology becomes always better and therefore the stuff that I have today is quickly outdated and therefore becomes cheaper, the price falls and um, yeah, something that I have to pay a lot of money for today, a smartphone, a laptop, PC, whatever, um, I can get that way cheaper in a few years. So um, yeah, we see inflation in some sectors or in some products and in some industries, but generally speaking, most um, yeah, economists or most yeah, central banks um, are looking for a low and stable um, inflation rate. <clears throat> so then the question becomes, okay, how is it measured at the end of the day? Because um, I want to give you a little, yeah, make you aware of the fact that um, when we talk about inflation, we can always see it from two sides. We can say the money, the currency, um, yeah, is less valuable or products and services became more expensive. It's yeah, two sides of the same coin, but nonetheless, um, very important to understand, especially when we talk later on about what can cause inflation or what we can actually do to, to fight it or to prepare for it. But before we do that, let's talk about how is it actually measured. Um, and um, I think that's an important part to understand because um, yeah, depending on how you measure it, you will see different um, results. But usually when we talk about um, inflation, especially when we're talking about consumer inflation, um, that is usually measured through a consumer price index, meaning usually every central bank, every country um, has their own, um, yeah, their own basket of goods and services that kind of represent um, yeah, the daily goods and needs and should represent what people buy and pay for on a daily basis. Um, and that then yeah, is indexed and represents the consumer price index. And then yeah, you can check every day, month, year, whatever, um, how that changed to the time period before. And then usually on a annualized basis, this is how you then express the inflation rate. Meaning, for example, when the Central Bank of Jamaica announces that the inflation rate is 5%, that then basically means that um, yeah, goods and services um, are now 5% more expensive or the other way around, um, yeah, the value of the Jamaican dollar lost 5% in that time period, in that case, a year. So um, why is it so important to um, understand? Because um, we need to be aware of that, um, yeah, depending on how you measure that basket or that inflation rate, that consumer price index, um, you will see different um, results, meaning it's, uh, yeah, kind of easy to manipulate um, the, the basket here to change the data or to yeah, reflect it in a way that um, might not um, be really 
accurate. Um, although there are reasons, for example, to change the basket over time. For example, some technology just becomes outdated and doesn't reflect the, the buying and, and uh, purchasing behavior of um, the population anymore. For example, nobody is yeah, going to buy typewriters anymore today, probably, but maybe 20 years ago. So from time to time, there needs to be some adjustment in that basket. Um, and again, that contains everything from food to electricity to uh, transportation, clothing, holidays, luxury items, um, everything. And uh, yeah, therefore, you always need to be very careful um, where you actually get that data from. Um, because yeah, depending from country to country, it can be measured differently. But not only that, um, yeah, maybe over time that basket um, yeah, gets changed and therefore the, yeah, the results or the actual accuracy gets kind of distorted. Okay, nonetheless, um, I think that should give you an idea of what inflation actually is, meaning yeah, it represents the decrease um, of the value of your money, meaning the decrease of the buying power. And uh, you could also say, um, yeah, the increase of prices of goods and services. And that's usually measured through an annualized inflation rate that is based and calculated on a consumer price index, which is a basket of uh, yeah, daily goods and services that represents the yeah, daily buying behavior or yeah, general buying behavior of a population. So then the question becomes, um, what can cause inflation? And uh, then of course, later on, uh, yeah, why um, can it become a problem? Or why is it um, a problem? So first of all, um, what can cause inflation? Um, again, um, it is often because, or sometimes we see high inflation, inflation rates or especially low inflation rates or extremes um, because of um, how we measure things. For example, um, as I just said, um, when you change the um, basket over time, how the, yeah, the consumer price index is actually calculated. And of course, um, yeah, you can see different inflation rates um, represented in that data. But um, you can also see statistical or just um, mathematical effects uh, like the base effect. For example, right now in 2021, when we just look at the data, we see relatively high inflation rates. Um, but that is, or at least a part of that, is because um, the base effect, meaning last year in 2020, we saw a contraction of the economy. Um, yeah, the, the market contracted, therefore prices um, also came, came down a little bit. Now they increase, meaning they get back to normal. So they actually, um, yeah, over, let's say, a three or pre-pandemic um, period of time, they didn't increase. But because we had that dip last year and we usually measure from the year before, now we see that base effect that although we just get back to yeah, the year before, or maybe two years before, we see that um, yeah, um, nominal high increase um, in inflation rate. So again, um, I just want to make you aware that we always have to be very, very careful um, on how we analyze that data and make sure that we have a look at multiple data points before we actually um, yeah, draw a conclusion. All right, besides yeah, changes uh, in, in measurement and in base effects, um, what else can cause inflation? And um, as I said earlier, we have basically two, yeah, two ways or two sides of the coin um, how um, inflation can increase or what can cause inflation. On the one hand, um, when we have more money in the system. 
meaning um, when money is cheap, for example, that can be when, um, when salaries um, are increasing over time, when interest rates are low, meaning when it's cheap to take uh, on a loan or to take um, yeah, a, a credit and to spend that. Um, and therefore the whole volume of money in the system and the yeah, flow of money in the system increases. That means money is cheap, meaning money becomes um, yeah, more abundant, more available. And when we then follow the supply and demand logic, assuming we have the same amount of goods and services, meaning production didn't change um, yeah, relatively or relevantly, um, meaning we have the same amount of goods and services. And on the other hand, we have more money that is available, then of course, relatively speaking, the money um, lost a little bit um, of value or is not as valuable as before, because now you need more money to pay or to buy the same amount of goods and services than before. So one reason um, can be, generally speaking, that we have more money in the system. Again, that again can have um, yeah, then different reasons, um, yeah, low interest rates, um, or generally speaking, just yeah, a little more lax um, monetary and fiscal policies can be reasons um, for that. Or yeah, if the government just um, is printing money, um, or if the government takes on a big amount of debt, for example, like we see in the US, um, when the government um, yeah, is uh, spending a lot of money for these stimulus checks or infrastructure programs, infrastructure bills, and so on, um, that is, again, a lot of money that is printed and that is pumped in the system and that has to go somewhere. And then on the other side um, of the equation, um, we have goods and services. So if the um, money supply um, or another example um, or the other point of view that you can take is to say, okay, um, if the money supply um, stays at the same level, um, but the supply of goods and services, for example, um, dries out, meaning there are less goods available than before, then again, we have the same situation. We have now, relatively speaking, more money in the system and less goods available. Um, and therefore, now you have to pay more money to get these goods. So although we have the same end results, meaning relatively speaking, we have more money and less goods and services and therefore inflation. The reason can be a different one. For example, the current supply chain shortage that we um, yeah, see on the, on the global scale right now basically causes all over the world um, yeah, a, a lack of um, goods, a lack of products, a lack of, lack of commodities, and therefore the prices for these commodities are rising. Okay, so um, I just want to yeah, make you aware of the fact that although um, we have the same end, end results, um, oftentimes um, the reasons can be um, different. And of course, sometimes, um, yeah, there can be a mixture of different reasons. Um, to be honest, that's most of the time in reality. Um, the situation that you have different factors that um, yeah, play a role and uh, more often than not, you can't really distinguish, okay, how much is that effect playing a role and how much is this situation um, affecting the, yeah, the whole situation. All right. Um, so we talked about what is inflation and we talked about what can cause inflation. So let's talk a little bit about um, the different sectors that um, yeah, will be affected or different industries that can be affected um, yeah, by higher inflation rates or by um, increasing prices. 
But before I do that, um, I want to yeah, spend one or two more minutes um, on inflation itself or um, yeah, why it's often so hard for a human to really get a grasp on inflation because um, most of the time we are not talking about hyperinflation where we have yeah, two digits or 100% inflation per month or something like that. Usually we have very moderate inflation rates, meaning usually one digit um, inflation rates. And that means um, that inflation is kind of silent and happens um, over time. And I think that's also one reason um, why we can't really see and feel it. And also, um, yeah, because there's, yeah, it's really hard to measure for someone in a day-to-day -day life. You may be feeling or seeing on your bills that the prices are increasing, but it's really hard to, um, to measure it uh, and to really nail it down or yeah, to, to pinpoint it. And therefore, um, yeah, I just want to go through an example with you to give you yeah, maybe a little better understanding. Um, but first of all, um, yeah, depending on where you live, you probably deal with different um, inflation rates or depending on what economy and jurisdiction we're talking about, um, yeah, the central banks accept or tolerate um, different levels of inflation. For example, um, yeah, if you want to be, become a member of the European Union, um, yeah, your country has to be uh, or has to have an inflation rate under 3% per year and that yeah, for a period of time to show that uh, that country has a stable economy and stable inflation rate. When you look at the Caribbean or at Jamaica, for example, um, yeah, central banks are a little bit more flexible there and uh, yeah, usually they are okay between an inflation rate between four and six percent. So um, yeah, just to make it easy, I want to use yeah, the average here. Let's pick the middle of five percent in that example to give you an understanding what happens um, when you have a five percent inflation rate and what happens over time. In that example, I will use a 10 year time period to um, yeah, to your money. So let's assume just to make it uh, easy and to make it easy to understand and to transfer to other examples. Let's assume you start out with a hundred dollar today. That's or whatever currency you want to um, put in here. So let's say we start out with a hundred and we have a yearly inflation rate of. 5%, meaning, um, yeah, you could say everything gets more expensive, price increase 5% every year, or you could also say your money loses 5% in value every year, depending um, on how you look at it. And um, then we want to see, um, yeah, what happens um, over longer period of time. Let's say, for example, what happens for 10 years or what happens after. 10 years rather. So after 10 years with 5% inflation rate, um, what happens to your $100? The future price, meaning the amount of money that you need to pay for the same goods or for the same services would then be 162 and 89 cents or $162. Okay, so meaning if that $100 represents, um, let's say, your salary or your income, you then need to get paid $162 just to be able to pay your rent by the same amount of food and so on. Or the other way around, if that $100 represents your, your savings um, or yeah, your, your savings account, your cash account um, that you might have, you need then yeah, invested in a way that in 10 years you have at least also $162 uh, yeah, to also again be able to pay for the then future prices. 
or same if you are a business and you know okay the prices for your commodities um, for your raw materials increases five percent every year you have a five percent inflation rate then you can calculate okay all right what do you have to pay in 10 years um, to buy for or to pay um, for the raw materials but again we can also see it um, from a different perspective we can also say okay not let's not look at the future price but let's have a look at the buying power meaning um, what happens um, with the 100 um, dollar how much money is that still worth and as you can see after 10 years with five percent inflation um, yeah your 100 dollar are almost losing 40 percent um, of its value, meaning we're now talking about $61.39. And um, yeah, I think that is maybe the big um, problem or the, uh, yeah, the, the problem when we're talking about inflation that, um, yeah, nobody comes to your paycheck or to your bank account and removes 5% um, every year. If that would be the case, uh, yeah, everybody would be um, protesting and there would be riots um, in the streets. Um, but because it happens in that um, silent way, um, so that it's yeah really hard for you to see, meaning yeah, the banknote with the $100 um, still is the banknote with the $100 or the $100 in your bank account um, is still the $100 in your bank account or your $100 salary is still your $100 salary. But you can buy much less than you can before than you can 10 years ago. So I hope that gives you um, yeah, kind of a grasp or understanding why it is so important um, yeah, to, to understand um, inflation and um, why it's so important um, yeah, for, for an economy or for society in general to have stable um, inflation rates or low and stable inflation rates because otherwise um, yeah, your money um, becomes worthless really really fast and although you might not be able to see it um, immediately um, yeah over time you feel it in your wallet okay so what sectors are going to be affected or what industries um, are going to be affected or maybe are already affected um, by higher prices and by by higher inflation Excuse me. Um, so generally speaking, when we look at the Caribbean, um, probably also have a kind of third factor that um, yeah, can play a role in the subjective inflation um, in, for example, Jamaican dollar or in your foreign, uh, foreign currency. Um, because, um, yeah, international currency is the US dollar, the international trade um, yeah, is based in the, on the US dollar, meaning, um, yeah, when the economy in Jamaica, let's stay at that example, if the economy in Jamaica, for example, slows down, meaning less tourism, um, therefore, um, yeah, less foreign currency, less uh, US dollar, for example, that comes into the country um, as a very um, import oriented uh, nation or yeah, most um, island nations in the Caribbean, Caribbean import um, a lot of goods. Um, you now have to pay more on the Forex market um, to actually get US dollar to then pay for your goods that you want to import. Meaning, um, yeah, the, the forex exchange rate um, or the devaluation of, uh, yeah, let's say, um, a local currency compared to the US dollar can, in terms of increasing prices, of course, also be a factor um, to drive inflation because now, um, yeah, and I think that's probably one of the things that a lot of Caribbean um, companies are seeing right now, 
um, that uh, because of all these different factors, because there is a supply chain disruption, there is a supply chain shortage on the one hand, and then uh, that drives um, yeah, prices for raw materials, for goods and services, uh, especially for goods um, on the one hand. And then on the other hand, um, you also see uh, uh, yeah, over time devaluation of the Jamaican dollar, for example, compared to the US dollar, meaning it is more, more expensive to trade in the currency for US dollar to then be able to actually buy um, raw materials on the international markets. Therefore, um, yeah, especially when you um, an, an import um, heavy industry, um, if you're very reliant on importing um, products or um, raw materials and whatnot, then um, yeah, that are probably the sectors um, that um, are already um, very vulnerable right now. And um, yeah, that probably will see uh, vulnerable, vulnerability over the next uh, yeah, one or two years at least till um, yeah, the supply chain problems that we're seeing globally right now have kind of yeah, get solved um, at least a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, what sectors or industries um, will be affected? Every sector or every industry, uh, again, that relies heavily on importing um, raw materials, importing um, goods from overseas. I think um, that's um, pretty accurate as a general statement that uh, one industry that will be um, affected, or one sector rather. Um, then as a second um, or maybe other sectors that uh, will suffer from um, inflation in an indirect way. And I will talk about that um, in a sec second, a little bit more detailed, um, are all sectors that um, depend or rely on low interest rates or are, on the other hand, vulnerable to high interest rates. Let me explain why. Um, when we talk about um, yeah, the, the next step, basically, what measures can we take, or especially what um, measures can um, central banks take to fight inflation, to stabilize inflation, um, then one available um, instrument of a central bank is to raise interest rates. Because at the end of the day, um, interest rates are nothing else than the price for money. Meaning, if the interest rates are low, then it's very cheap to lend money, to get money in general. If interest rates are high, you have to pay a lot of interest. You have to pay a high price for money. Therefore, um, when uh, central bank wants to fight inflation, what they can do is to say, all right, we want to um, yeah, lower the supply of money in the system. Again, that's one part of the equation that uh, can be, or yeah, that is relevant to the inflation calculation or that can cause inflation. Therefore, uh, yeah, the central bank can um, yeah, influence the, the monetary policy or the fiscal policy on that side to um, yeah, to fight or to control inflation. Therefore, what they can do is to raise interest rates. And they raise interest rates, now it becomes um, yeah, more expensive for um, yeah, corporate um, banks to, um, yeah, to um, borrow money from the central bank. Uh, they will then yeah, forward that basically to their customers, to other banks, to, to um, retail customers and so on. And therefore it becomes, uh, in general, money becomes more expensive. Therefore that sucks a little bit of the money out of the system. And therefore, um, yeah, that balance between money supply or money in the system on the one hand and uh, amount of goods and services, sorry, that are available in the economy on the other hand, um, kind of gets balanced out. And therefore, that is one way uh, our central bank um, can fight inflation. 
And um, that's why I said, if you are a business or every sector, every industry that relies on cheap money um, to finance their business, to finance their growth, um, whatever it might be, whatever your business model might be, um, yeah, expect rising interest rates um, in the near future. Um, and therefore, make sure you take the right measurements because that will be um, at least one instrument or is at least one instrument that um, yeah, a central bank has to fight um, inflation. On the other hand, um, the question will be or the question is, um, are central banks actually going to use that instrument? Meaning, is that instrument in reality actually available? Um, and when we ask the question, I think we need to be a little bit um, or to, we need to differentiate a little bit more because, um, yeah, I think we need to differentiate between markets like the Caribbean or regions like the Caribbean and markets like the US, North America, Europe, um, and so on. Because, um, yeah, we see a different picture in terms of interest rates, uh, depending on what market we are looking at. For example, if we look at um, yeah, the North American um, market, the, the Federal Reserve or the interest rates there, um, yeah, we see interest rates um, at almost zero. And um, yeah, we see the same when we look at the European Central Bank, when we look at Europe. Um, and why is that? Um, that's basically, yeah, historically from the um, global financial crisis that we saw in 2008, um, yeah, which then kind of resulted in a, yeah, in a financial debt crisis of a lot of uh, states, um, a lot of governments, um, rather, meaning um, what governments did um, was to, or to, yeah, kind of um, help the, the um, economies was to, again, um, yeah, pump a lot of, or print a lot of money, uh, pump a lot of fresh money into the system, into the economy to kind of reanimate that, yeah, reanimate the, the local economies that worked um, to a certain degree. We yeah, saw the, one of the biggest bull markets and biggest um, yeah, growth markets over the last 10 years. Um, meaning on the one hand, they yeah, put a lot of money um, in the market. And on the other hand, um, yeah, they kept interest rates low to keep money cheap. And of course, um, because now they have to, the, the states in that uh, example, or in that situation um, now back in 2008, 9, 10, now have to pay so much debt because again, they yeah, borrowed that money and then put it into the economy that of course um, they weren't able or aren't able till today to pay higher interest rates that why that's why they kept the interest rates very low near zero percent and on the other hand um yeah had a moderate inflation rate at one two three percent depending what time period and what country um you are looking at and um yeah that was basically a way for them to in real terms um yeah to deleverage meaning to get rid um of a lot of their debt because yeah because of the inflation rate that was there basically all of their um yeah borrowed money um became less and less valuable meaning it be becomes easier and easier to pay it back over time and now that results in the situation that a lot of countries um yeah wouldn't be able to pay higher interest rates on their bond payments because, for example, um, yeah, let's take um, a country uh, in, in Europe or the US, for example, that pays, let's say, 2% two, um, two interest um, payments on their bond payments to, yeah, to finance the government. Um, if that now increases to still moderate, let's say, 4%, now the country literally doubled their debt payments. And uh, yeah, a lot of economies, a lot of governments, a lot of countries 
are still not able um, to do so and to to pay that and to finance that, especially as I said, uh, yeah, in Europe and uh, in North America. When we look um, at the Caribbean, it's a little um, yeah different picture. Um, we have yeah some countries uh, um, that yeah still um, restructuring restructuring some some debt um, from the past. Um, some countries don't have any access um, yeah, to the international bond markets um, at all. And some um, have access and can finance um, some of their um, yeah, some of their, their um, needed money um, that way, um, but have to pay relatively high interest rates. So um, I think Caribbean countries compared to European or North American countries um, have probably um, that kind of wiggle room or have that instrument of increasing interest of raising in, uh, in, of increasing interest rates to fight inflation um, and probably again North America and Europe um, do not have these instruments. So um, when we talk about inflation in general. I think, um, yeah, it's important to make the distinction or always, again, as I said in the beginning, to make um, sure or to be aware um, wh what data you are looking at and um, yeah, what specific markets you are talking about. All right, so before we wrap this up, um, I just want to touch on one important topic um, that yeah, maybe can uh, or might be come important over the next weeks um, or months. And um, yeah, I talked about it um, earlier on or over the last week, touched here and there a little bit. But um, what I want to talk about really quick is the um, yeah, kind of unfolding um, real estate crisis in China. To be more specific, um, yeah, the half default um, or probable default um, of the real estate developer Evergrande. And um, yeah, I don't want to go too much into detail um, into the whole situation that would be probably deserve um, a yeah, whole um, live stream for itself. But um, yeah, to give you the quick um, update, basically Evergrande is one of the biggest real estate developers in development companies in China. Um, and they have um, yeah, outstanding debt uh, or yeah, money at risk of, I think, 300 billion um, US dollars. And uh, yeah, over the last weeks and months, they struggled to, yeah, to fulfill some of their bonds and some of their um, debt payments pretty much. And um, yeah, that kind of reminds me um, at the yeah, first real estate and subprime and then global financial crisis in 2007, 2008 and 2009, because that was also a kind of unfolding um, process over time, um, kind of similar situation there. Um, yeah, we saw um, rising interest rates, um, especially in that case from the um, Federal Reserve in um, the United States and to um, yeah, partially fight inflation um, that then uh, caused the collapse of the real estate market because you know, a lot of the um, credits there um, or a lot of the um, yeah, interest rates there were adjustables um, and not fixed, meaning as soon as the interest rates um, yeah, were, uh, were rising, um, now, everybody that has financed uh, real estate also have to pay a higher mortgage payment and a lot of people just couldn't afford that. Therefore, that's, um, yeah, a lot of that debt, a lot of that real estate debt defaulted. And that is basically how the whole bubble started to burst. And then that was a kind of domino effect. And in 2008, we saw the collapse um, of the investment bank Lehman Brothers. And then that was kind of the official kickoff, um, what we yeah, today now know as the global financial crisis. 
and therefore um, yeah I just want to be um, I want to make you aware of the fact um, that we may be seeing something similar um, in China right now again a very over leveraged um, overheated real estate market um, that yeah, might be um, collapsing right now and that might then um, yeah have uh, or cause domino effects into the global economy and yeah then we see way more or oh, yeah way worse effects and uh, have a way worse situation than we might have today so we hopefully won't see that but um yeah i just want to make you aware of that situation and uh, yeah take the right measures and even if it's just to keep an eye on that and to monitor the current yeah global economic situation because at the end of the day yeah the whole pandemic thing brought everything a little closer together or at least it made us aware how interconnected everything is therefore yeah the economic or political situation in another country potentially can affect your business or maybe even your private life that being said um i hope that was insightful for you i hope you learned something and uh, yeah maybe it sparked the one thought or another and um, if that's the case feel free to leave a like to yeah, leave a comment uh, let me know what you think maybe you have a question maybe you disagree at some point with me that's absolutely fine let's have a, a conversation about that and um yeah what else nothing else so far from my side again i hope it was helpful i hope um yeah i see you next time if you want to get notified whenever i go live usually the best way to do so is to um, yeah first of all connect with me on linkedin and then of course to make sure um, yeah to subscribe to my youtube channel and to hit that bell notification thing to make sure you get notified whenever i go live or release another video because otherwise um yeah you might miss that and you might get kind of buried in the YouTube and social media algorithms. So yeah, take care of that right now. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. I hope you have a great week, a great morning, evening, whenever you're watching this. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one.